Okay, we're going to start by finishing the baby bird problem. But before we get that far, I'm going to come back to this one and just want to remind you of a little something. When we were here and we integrated and got here, I had said that, you know, we technically should have used u substitution, but because of what it is, it's just y plus or minus a constant. We could jump straight to here, but to be careful when that isn't the case. So now let's go look at baby bird. Okay. So we were here. And we are now on C. C says to use separation of variables to find y equals b of t, the particular solution to the differential equation with initial condition b of 0 equals 20. Okay, so let me rewrite this. db dt equals 1 fifth times 100 minus b. All right, and our initial condition was b of 0 equals 200. Okay. <clears throat> So I'm going to separate. When I do that, I will get 1 over 100 minus b db equals 1 fifth dt. Okay. Now, when I go to integrate, so the question that came up yesterday was, okay, we separated. That gives us a point, right? Then we're going to integrate. So when I was writing the integral symbols right here, the question came up, can we write them right there? Or do we have to rewrite it since what I have in green is my separation of variables? And the answer to that is what we have right here is totally fine. There's no need to rewrite a ton of, of extra stuff there. So when I integrate, then I need to pay attention to the this. I know this is going to give me a natural log. But notice this is not b plus or minus a constant. So you want to be very, very careful. Here, when I integrate on the left, um, my u would be 100 minus b. I don't think I have enough room for that. And then my du would be equal to negative db. So there's a sign issue there. So you want to be very, very careful with that. When we do our u substitution, this would give me um, so 1 over u, ooh, that is not a u, 1 over u, and then since there's a negative here, I would need a negative here, which means I need a negative on the outside, right? And so that negative db, but I have this negative out here, there's a negative, and then this is du. So be careful about that. And then when I integrate on this side, this is going to be 1 fifth times t plus c. Okay. Oh, I left off my integral symbol here. I'm still integrating. I haven't integrated yet. So the negatives on the outside, this negative 1 dB, that's right there. And then there's my u. So then when I integrate that, that's going to give me 1, I'm sorry, a negative 1 times the natural log of the absolute value of whatever u was, which was 100 minus b. And that's equal to 1 fifth times t plus c. Okay, so I've integrated both sides, right? And this, so one of the other questions I asked, I think I had told you on some of the older ones where they were um, giving points for integrating both well, one point for each side. It could be one point for each side. In this case, it was just one point. And it's basically if the two sides, if you're kind of integrating the same or if they're one of them is super simple or something, you may only get one point. And in this case, we only got one point. And then um, the other thing that has changed in recent years, but again, could change back. We had this point here for C. Now, had I forgotten it here but put it here, I wouldn't get this point. But this point is actually might be tied to something else that we do, which I'll get to in just a second. Okay, so I've integrated both sides. Now I have two choices. I can go ahead and substitute in for my initial condition, or I can solve for b first. 
believe that's what I was trying to solve for. Yes. Um, and it's kind of up to you, but if you are going to try and finish the entire question, which I would suggest that you do, um, I would say if you have a log at this point, it might be a little bit easier for you to go ahead and um, solve for your variable right now, which means that I would take what I have on the left and right side of the equal sign is now going to become the exponent with my base e. However, when I look at this and I look at my exponents, I'm not sure that I like this negative log thing that's going on right here. And so I think I would like to take care of that before I actually do this. Okay? So if you notice something like that, you're like, wait a minute, let's rewind for just a second. I think that I want that negative gone. So if I multiply through by a negative 1, okay, when I do that, I will get the, and I'm going to write it over here, natural log of the absolute value of 100 minus b, and that equals negative 1 -fifth t, and then this is still going to be plus c, because remember everything just kind of, even if I multiplied by 2 or whatever, c is just c at this point. Now that this isn't negative, I think we could do a little bit, you know, better. And the right-hand side has a negative on it. That's fine. So now I'm going to make E my base again. So when I do that, E to the natural log, this just comes out as 100 minus B. Remember, these are the exponents of the E now, and they're being added. So that is E to the negative. And negative 1 T, I can write it as negative T over 5. It's the same thing. Um, and then this will become times e to the c. And then c just becomes c, e, or e to the c, rather. That's just some constant. So 100 minus b is equal to c times e to the negative t over 5. And then when I solve for b, I'm going to move b over to the right else over to the left. So I'm going to get 100 minus e to the negative t over 5. And that would be equal to, oh, I forgot my c. c oh, good lord. Okay, let me, I forgot my c on there. Minus c times e to the negative t over 5. Add b to the right-hand side. There's my b. Okay, so I've got b, solved for b, I need to use my initial condition to figure out what c is, but I think, I think that I wrote b down wrong. Yeah, b of 0 is 20, not 200, so let's not get insane here. Uh, that should be 20. Alrighty, so now here I am going to substitute in 0 for t, 20 for b, into this equation right here. So 100 minus c times e to the negative 0 over 5 power equals b, which is 20. So e to the 0, this is just going to become 1. So basically I have 100 minus c equals 20 which means when I subtract 20 from both sides and get 80, add C over there, and that's what I get. I get that C equals 80. So I have found C, and then I'm going to go back and put all this together into this B right here. So B of T is equal to 100 minus 80 times e to the negative t over 5 power. All right. And so we talked about points. Let's go back and talk about points again. Um, I said this point could possibly be connected to something now, and that's your initial condition. So you basically have to have your C put in the right spot and then also use your initial condition 
And really, you can substitute it in and just stop and be done with that point. You would lose, if you did this before you did this part, you could get that fourth point or that other point, but then you miss the solving for B. So again, it's however you want to figure out how to make the most sense of everything. Okay. So now I know because I copied these in a weird way, we are jumping around a little bit, but I want to... I want you to go to this one next. This is similar to the baby bird problem. So before you actually um, watch the video of me working this, I think it would be a good idea for you to pause and try and figure out some of this on your own. I know you may or may not have tried um, the other day, but now that we've talked about it more, hopefully we can get a little bit more out of this, right? Okay, so let's see what we have here. At the beginning of 2010, a landfill contained 1,400 tons of solid waste. The increasing function, that could be very important to me, W models the total amount of solid waste, total amount of solid waste stored at the landfill. Planners estimate that W will satisfy this differential equation for the next 20 years. W is measured in tons and T is measured in years from the start of 2010, okay? So basically we're going from zero to 20. That's what this is telling us. We're starting at zero, and then for the next 20 years, so this is our uh, domain there. So we're gonna use the line tangent to the graph of W at t equals zero to approximate the amount of solid waste that the landfill contains at the end of the first three months of 2010. All right, so that means that time t is one fourth because this is months and this is years. All right, so let's look at A here. So A, they have told me I need a tangent line. So that means I need a point and I need a slope. All right, so let's see what we have. We want, says line tangent to the graph, t equals zero. Okay, so I know that t, for my point, for my point, t equals zero. Um, what would the other be? So if t equals zero, it says, da da da, so, here, 1,400 tons, that was at the beginning of 2010, so that's what we're starting with. So when time equals zero, we already had 1,400. Slope is my rate of change, which is my derivative, which I have in the equation that they gave me, which is the same equation right there. So I need to find dw dt evaluated at, and so then I got to figure out, am I evaluating it at, do I substitute in zero? Do I substitute in um, 1,400? Well, I'm evaluating it at the point, zero, 1,400, right? And when you look at your function here, you're not substituting in t, you are substituting in w, so be very careful. So this is 1 25th of W, well, well, I just said that, but I didn't do it, 1,400 minus 300, okay? That is my slope, okay? And you don't have to simplify it at all. Um, I mean, I could write the equation on the line with that being my slope. We could simplify it some, because um, I think sometimes when you leave things looking really wacky, that just messes with your brain more than anything. But we don't ha definitely don't have to simplify it all the way. So 1,400 minus 300, that is 1,100 over 25. Could I, could, I, uh, could I simplify it more than that? Absolutely, but I would not bother. That's my slope. I can write my equation now. So my equation is y equals my slope, which is 1,100 over 25 times x minus 0 
and then plus 1400, right? Could I simplify that also? Absolutely. Do I want to bother? Absolutely not. But what I was saying, instead of the 1100 over 25, I could put that right there for my slope because I'm not going to have to get this all the way down to the end anyway. So I'm approximating it. So I'm going to use this to approximate the amount of solid waste at the end of the first three months, and they gave me what T is. So basically, I am estimating W of one-fourth, or approximating. So remember, I need my squiggly equal signs. And that is equal to, approximately equal to, 1,100 over 25 times one-fourth minus zero plus 1400 and I would just leave it do I have to put the minus zero no I do not but again if you're just substituting stuff in just leave it you don't have to worry about it but we do need units so on here W of 1 fourth this is my approximation what are my units here W is measured in tons so this is tons so let's look at the scoring here the scoring is that we did dw dt at t equals zero, which is, means we used 1400. So evaluating this is a point, and then getting your answer is a point. All right, let's look at B. B, we're going to find the second derivative. We did that yesterday. So I want you to try and find this second derivative if you haven't already. Let me write down what my function was. This is dw dt equals 1 over 25 times w minus 300. All right, so I want to find the second derivative. When I go to find the second derivative, Got to make sure you put the twos in the right place. Just to look to the question for that. So I'm going to take the derivative. That's going to be 1 over 25. When I take, and I could have distributed the 1 over 25, but this just ends up being a constant that's going to zero out anyway. The derivative of this is 1, but it's 1 dw dt. So then I'm not finished finding my second derivative. My second derivative equals 1 25th times, and then dw dt is this right here, times 1 over 25 times w minus 300. Now, could I simplify that? Yes. Should I? No, because I don't want to mess anything up. Just stop right there. All right, so we're supposed to then determine whether my answer in part A is an underestimate or overestimate of the amount of solid waste that the landfill contains at time t equals one fourth. Okay, so let's think about what we know. We've got the, if this says this is an always an increasing function, see I told you that might, that might come in handy here. It's always increasing, so let's just think about what our function looks like. If it's always increasing, then the um, we started at 1,400, right? And I'm not saying it's a line. I'm just saying it's increasing. It could be doing any kinds of crazy things. But it's always increasing. And if this is my 1,400 for zero, that number is only going to get bigger, which means that the second derivative is greater than zero, like I'm gonna, not going to get a number different than that, right? Um, it's greater than zero at t equals one-fourth, okay? Therefore, w of t, okay, so let's think about what that means. Let's write down our fun chart. So if the second derivative is positive, that means W of t is concave up. Okay. 
at t equals one fourth. I should have said years. One fourth of a year. Okay, so now let's think about what that means, because that this was kind of enough in the other one because we had a graph. We could talk about concavity. But if my graph is concave up, right? And let's just say that this is my tangent line, right? Okay, so I found it at zero, and then it's concave up. If my graph is the pink, and then my tangent line is, or my tangent line is purple, if this is zero, when I estimate, when I use my line to estimate anything else, all of those values are going to be underneath what the real values are. So I'm going to have to say, da 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 da, W of t is concave up at t equals one fourth of a year. Therefore, my part A, A is an underestimate. So this is really just trying to pull all that stuff together. It's totally fine that in part A, I don't even have the real number. Like, I don't even know what the heck the number is. It doesn't really matter. And here, I don't have to figure out actual numbers. I just need to know that it's always increasing. Obviously not a line if it's concave up, but it's increasing, so it's going to have to be greater than zero. Okay? You get two points here. You get a point for finding the second derivative, and you get a point for your explanation. Let's try C. C says find the particular solution, W equals W of T, to this differential equation. So I'm going to rewrite this. DW dt equals 1 over 25 times W minus 300. And my initial condition, let's see if I can write this down correctly this time, W of 0 equals 1,400. All right. If you haven't already tried this part, I know I sound like a broken record, but I know some of you aren't pausing, then pause and actually do that. All right. So I am going to separate the variables. So I'm going to get 1 over W minus 300 DW equals... 125th dt. Okay? That is one point for separation of variables. And remember, it is fine to put our integration symbols right here, so we are good there. Then I'm going to integrate. Okay? When I do this one, I can use u substitution. I don't really need to, though. This is just going to be the natural log of the absolute value of w minus 300. That's equal to 1 25th times t plus c. Okay? So then I got a point. Let's see on this one. Yeah, it was just one point for the antiderivatives. I have one pending point for my c. I'm good so far because I have the c there, but I'm going to have to use my initial condition. Um, so really there's only a point and a half left. I'm going to say this is kind of half of a point. Um, if I use my initial condition and I stop, I've got all three of those points, I'm good. I have a fourth point that I could get by actually um, finding C correctly and solving for W. So let's do that. I'm going to put my E down here because it's natural log. I'm going to go ahead and solve. And then that'll give me, and I don't have that negative here, so I'm not going to change my mind. But again, I could if I was like, wait, I don't want that. You can just mark it out. You do not have to erase anything. So this gives me W minus 300 equals, so this is going to be E. And that 1 over 25 times T, I can make T over 25 times E to the C. Remember, there's no magic there. It's your exponentials rule. So then W minus 300 equals C times E to the T over 25 power. So then, write this over here, W is equal to C times E to the T over 25 
plus 300. All right, so I would get a point for solving for W, really after I get my C. And so then I'm going to use my initial condition, which again, I hope I wrote down right this time. So this is going to be 1400 equals C times E to the 0 over 25 plus 300. So 1400 minus 300 is 1100. That's equal to, and then this is would be 0, so that becomes 1. That's equal to C, which means my final answer then would be W of T equals, and I'm coming back up here, 1100 times e to the t over 25 plus 300. Right. Okie dokie. Let's see what else we have left. I think there was, oh, there was another one. Yeah, this one. All right, so we're going to consider this differential equation on the axis provided. Go sketch a slope field for the given differential equation at the eight points indicated. If you haven't already done that, do that, and then come back, and I will walk you through it. All right, so if I start here at 1, 0, I can start wherever I want, but 1, 0, I'm going to substitute in 1 for the x value, and 0 for the y value, that's going to give me 1 over 1. Slope of 1 looks about like that. 2, 0 would give me 1 half, so that's a less steep slope. When I do 1, 1, that would give me 2 over 1, so that's a steeper slope. Remember, they've got to look like they're actually changing here. 1, negative 1. So if my y value is negative 1, that's going to give me 0. So that means this will be 0 also. Negative 1, 0 would give me negative 1. Negative 2, 0 would give me negative 1 half. And negative 1, 1 would give me negative 2. Okay, so there is my slope field. All right, so B says, find the particular solution to the differential equation with this initial condition. So let me rewrite the differential equation. We had dy dx equals 1 plus y over x. All right, so I'm going to separate. That will give me 1 over 1 plus y dy that equals 1 over x dx. Right, so then I'm going to integrate both sides. Now I have um, both of these will end up being natural logs. So I'm going to have, and this one, since just a positive y and there's no leading coefficient, nothing else as weird is going on, got the natural log of the absolute value of 1 plus y equals the natural log of the absolute value of x plus c. And I have integrated both sides. And again, since they are um, since they are both logs, I think I would go ahead and solve for y here. So this is going to be, I'm going to take e to those powers there. And e to the natural log, that just brings me out and makes it 1 plus y here. So I'm going to split it. I get e to the natural log of the absolute value of x plus, or times, rather, e to the c. All right, so then what happens here, this is just going to end up giving me the x. And this ends up being a C, just like it did before. So I get 1 plus Y equals C times X. So that means that Y is equal to C times X minus 1. See, they don't all have to be crazy weird when they're natural logs. So now that I have that, I have solved for Y. 
So now I am going to use my initial condition, which is right here. My y value is 1. That's equal to c times negative 1 minus 1. So if I add 1 to both sides, I get 2 equals negative c. So c equals negative 2. And that means that my final answer then is y equals negative 2x minus 1. There you go. Okay, so I think that I have done all of the ones that we hadn't done together. If not, you go finish those. And um, make sure you come on Thursday with your Wednesday worksheet that was technically due today. <laughs>